everyone was hyped over the new Pokemon in Minecraft mod called Cobblemon. I mean, what's not to love about it? You get the blocky aesthetic of Minecraft while still catching all your favorite Pokemon, and it just has this feel to it that makes it so much more lively and vibrant, and I think a big part of that is the variety of animations a single Pokemon gets from walking around the world, falling asleep, and even being defeated in battle. The mod is releasing a major update very soon called the Friends and Farms update, focusing on improving the multiplayer experience and exploration. I had the chance to play an early version of it on a special map going through all the new features which was made by the devs themselves, so let's dive right in. The long wait has finally ended. The Johto and Paldian starters have been added to the game, and I think the devs felt bad about not having the Johto starters available to begin with, so they went ahead and gave Chikorita, Cyndaquil, and Totodile a very unique feature that I have not seen with any other Pokemon yet. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The most important thing about the game is the Pokemon themselves, and so they have gone ahead and added around 200 new Pokemon into this update with some fan favorites like the Gardevoir line, Metagross line, and even Charcadet, Armorage, and Cerulege. If you don't remember, some Pokemon are capable of traveling with you on your shoulder and give you extra buffs. Mimikyu is the newest Pokemon on that list, but doesn't give any boost. Pokemon are like pets, and pets deserve a nickname. And that's right, you can now nickname your Pokemon by opening up the summary window and clicking on their name. And just like that, I now have Blossom the Chikorita, which is so cute. Now I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think that the Johto starters are the only Pokemon so far that have a battle animation. Chikorita gets its vines out, Cyndaquil gets its flames up, and Totodile gets amped up. I'm sure they'll give more Pokemon these features, but they need to get caught up with all the other stuff in the game before focusing on that. If you haven't noticed already, Pokemon now give off a cry when thrown out or are sent into battle. This is another great addition improving the liveliness of Pokemon in the wild. Some are pretty cute, while others can be menacing, and it all adds up into each of their personalities. The next big thing that I think people are excited for is the addition of the Ranch Block. It's basically a little machine that allows you to let the Pokemon in your PC roam around your base. You can put up to a maximum of 16 Pokemon in a single Ranch Block, and I think it's going to be a great way to interact with your favorite Pokemon if you don't have any space left on your team. Players have been wanting to trade Pokemon with their friends, and now you can! Just press the same button that you throw out your Pokemon while looking at another player. You can then open up a trading window and see all there is to it. So now, you can evolve some of your favorite Pokemon like Gengar and Scissor with the help of your friends. Also, let me know what your favorite part about this update is in the comments as it helps the devs out a lot on what to focus on in the future. Now we move on to the farming aspect of this update. To start things off, we have a collection of berries that you can grow, 69 in fact. This can be an overwhelming number, so what the devs decided was to make it so that only 12 of those 69 spawn naturally in the world and in the farms of villages. In order to get the remaining 57 types of berries, you will need to carefully crossbreed specific berries by placing them next to each other, and this creates a mutation which ends up growing into a new berry tree. The most important use of berries is for the crafting of potions. Yes, healing items have now been added as craftable goods, so you no longer have to depend on the healing machine which, by the way, has had a nice little upgrade in animation and sound, which I do enjoy. In order to craft healing items, you will need some of the basic berries like Warren Berries, Pecha, Chesto, etc. But you will also need a new plant called the Medicinal Leak, which was a feature in Pokemon Legends Arceus. You can find them growing on the edge of lakes and rivers, and they are fairly common. Once you harvest them, you will need to throw them into a brewing stand with a bunch of water bottles, and this results in an item called the Medicinal Brew. 
You can then throw these medicinal brews back into the brewing stand with an orange berry and you will get a few potions. Do this with a Petra berry and you'll get a bunch of antidotes, so on and so forth with each corresponding berry. You can also upgrade your potions by adding on more powerful healing items into the brewing stand and that's basically the gist. Revival herbs are also a new feature to help revive your Pokemon from fainting. These plants can be found in lush caves such as this one and they are all over the place. These herbs can be used to craft more powerful revives like the Max Revive but they are pretty good by themselves. There are so many new items like energy roots that grow on ceilings, X items, vitamins, XP candy, rare candy, power items, PP ups, ethers and elixirs but I'm not gonna go in depth with them. Nature mints are also coming into this update. You can find these plants growing on mountainous areas. When you harvest them, you get a leaf of a certain color and combining them with other colors creates the different nature changing mints. And that's about all there is to it for this upcoming update. This is an important disclaimer. This is nowhere near the final release, so there may be changes to various things along the way or even a few more additions. Who knows? All I know is that I'm excited for this and you should too.